Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education. Today's lesson will be on digital citizenship. I'm your instructor, Frank Avella. Today, you will learn everything you need to know about digital citizenship. Some of the topics include the two pillars of digital citizenship, as well as the nine essential elements of digital citizenship, which will each be explored in detail. Now, we're gonna open up with the overall mission and purpose for students. The overall mission is to prepare students for the global technology demands of the future. Some schools may create their own individual missions with the input of various stakeholders. Stakeholders include parents, teachers, students, paraprofessionals, administrators, and other personnel. Society must address the issue of digital divide, which describes the fact that some students still do not have access to the internet due to socioeconomic factors. Digital citizenship is also about building character within children and having children learn how to behave with integrity. And lastly, digital citizenship must help students develop the skills necessary to have successful careers. Every year, technology becomes more and more important the next section is a brief overview of everything that digital citizenship encompasses. Digital citizenship is defined as the ability to engage with the internet or technology in a safe and meaningful way. Students must become very skilled and adept when using a variety of online tools. At the very least, they should have a broad understanding and basic ability of usage. Some behaviors of a digital citizen include using social media responsibly, understanding associated terms such as hashtags, locking devices, knowing how to search and filter for accurate results, creating a website, using safe payment practices, protecting private information, while being able to build an online business. But being a digital citizen means being a functioning member of society. The children of today will one day grow up and run the planet. And a big theme of digital citizenship is online safety. We all have to be on the lookout for the dangers that lurk online. Just like someone can rob you at home, they can rob your information. We're going to move on to the two pillars of digital citizenship. The first pillar being respect. Schools have both students and staff sign an acceptable use policy. This is a set of rules and guidelines that restrict the way individuals are supposed to behave while using the school's internet services. Character education classes help instill the concept of respect for children. You have to teach them. Because so much activity is transparent online, we need our students to behave in a decent manner. Many students become cyber bullies. That's because of the online disinhibition effect, where it's easier to insult somebody from behind a computer screen as opposed to face to face. Next, we're gonna move on to the second pillar, and that is to protect. One of the most important things to protect yourself against is identity theft. A person's private information must be protected at all costs. One way online thieves use private information is to open up credit cards in the victim's name. Unfortunately, once your information is stolen, it can find its way to the dark web. Information is bought and paid for. Adolescent students should protect themselves from catfishing. I think everyone has seen the show. Every day, somebody gets catfished. Chat rooms are one of the most dangerous places online. People create friendships with the sole purpose of one day asking for money. The next topic is a digital footprint. A digital footprint is the personal information that someone leaves behind while they are using the internet whether intentional or not intentional. A digital footprint, for example, includes the emails that have been sent between you and another person. Oftentimes, emails are saved and they can be used against someone. Footprints also include the information that you purposefully leave behind on the internet, whether in a Facebook biography. Although not everybody realizes this, a person's search history is actually a trail of data that you're leaving behind. If you watch the news, you may have seen a number of people lose their jobs or careers over one inappropriate tweet. Something as trivial as, say, giving a like on a comment or video contributes to the footprint. The words that you post will live long after you have gone. This is a concept that isn't really easy to comprehend. A digital footprint includes everything. It includes the web pages that we visit. Continuing, the next section is copyrights, an important topic. Copyrights can be defined as the legal protection of an owner's work. The first thing students should do is investigate a piece of work that they wish to use. Thanks to the internet, it's much more easy now to find information on copyrights than ever before. There are actually a ton of free to use articles, images and videos on the internet. Sometimes the only way to properly use a piece of information is to purchase that information. Still, students should be able to find cheaper ways. Sometimes you just need to give that person credit. It's the right thing to do anyway. Another important concept is fair use, which states copyright material may, 
under certain circumstances be used for purposes such as criticism, news reporting, etc. and so forth. The next section is developing passwords for safety and protection. An important step towards digital citizenship is having a safe password. Now, the first rule of having a password is don't share that password with anyone. That includes best friends, girlfriends, even siblings. Keep it private. When creating a strong password, you should include the following. Have numbers, capital letters, lowercase letters, and symbols such as the at sign or maybe a percentage sign. The next rule is that long passwords are better than short passwords. Here is an example of a long password. No one is hacking that password. And lastly, avoid using personal information for those passwords. For example, don't use your birthday or your mother's name. These type of passwords can be hacked by someone close to you. So at this moment, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and hit that like. Share this video if you can, and please hit that subscribe button. Anyway, let's get back to it. Student agency. Student agency is about giving students autonomy over their learning experience. One component of student agency is 20% time. The idea is that if students finish all their work, they can dedicate 20% of their time to side projects. Agency is about taking ownership of their work. And one way students can do that is to present that information to the entire classroom. Students don't have to work these projects alone. They can take on the leadership role as a project manager. Rotate so all students get a chance to be manager. Ultimately, it's about developing good communication skills. You will never be a great leader or manager without the ability to communicate to those around you. Now we approach the nine elements of digital citizenship. And the first of the nine elements is going to be literacy. Digital literacy is defined as the right way to utilize specific technology. Before using technology, you first have to identify the specific needs for that technology. Consider the different needs for an iPad as opposed to a Chromebook. Digital literate students are skilled at searching the internet skilled at finding the information that they need and evaluating that information for its validity. Digital literacy is also about finding and using the right tool, which isn't easy considering the vast number of digital tools available. And lastly, you need to keep up with the new technologies, updates and changes that occur so frequently. Subscribe to newsletters, read articles, keep up to date with everything that's going on. The second of the nine essential elements of digital citizenship is commerce. Digital commerce is about understanding the use of money through online methods. First, you must recognize all the dangers that come with using your money in the digital world. I would argue commerce is even more dangerous online than it is compared to face-to-face -face interactions. There are online credit gambling sites, illegal downloads, and even ways to get drugs online. Nevertheless, there are many positives. Business in particular will benefit because of the ease of transaction with using online payment methods. Many young adults have become full-time entrepreneurs due to the wealth of information and people that are available to anyone using the internet. The third element is digital communication. Digital communication can be defined as the ability to use different online tools to communicate. There are a number of communication apps designed to make it easier for members of a team to communicate. The cell is the most important tool for communication. Cell phones can make calls, videos, chats, text, downloads, almost everything. The digital citizen communicates with others in the online world while adhering to a code of conduct and behavior. Digital online communication is so necessary today because now, unlike any other time before, a person has the ability to instantly talk with someone from around the globe. Next of the nine elements is access. Access relates to the digital divide, which describes how some students have access to the internet and other students do not have access. Unfortunately, due to socioeconomic factors, not all students will be able to access the internet. Most of us take for granted our access to the internet. Still, in the 21st century, we must aim for equality in terms of internet access. Schools look to tackle this issue by providing open labs to their students. This may mean keeping media centers open after school hours, but even without school help, visiting a library is an excellent option. All you need is a library card. The next element up is etiquette. Etiquette is defined as digital citizens exhibiting appropriate behavior for each digital tool. 
and the guidelines for online behavior are pretty much the same. Simply treat others on the internet the same way you want to be treated. The dangers of inappropriate online behavior include suspensions and demonetization. Many social media platforms including Facebook and Twitter will suspend you and YouTubers can be demonetized just the same. You also need to understand that at certain times it makes sense to use formal language when writing and that other times it's okay to use informal language. Moving along we come upon digital law. Digital citizens have the responsibility to follow legal guidelines, policies and rules. For example, you are not allowed nor do you have the rights to send out viruses or other types of malware to other people. When it comes to school systems, the school itself is legally bound to intervene during any instance of cyberbullying. This goes for bullying that is not online as well. Too often, students plagiarize the work of others. Others on the internet may plagiarize someone's work. There are also crimes against hacking, like hacking a person's email may fall under the Wire Fraud Act. Moving forward, the next element is called digital rights. Understand that rights and freedoms are also extended to the digital world. All citizens in the United States are afforded a number of inalienable rights through the Constitution, and that also includes rights to digital citizens. One of those rights includes the right to free speech. Remember, free speech is not the same thing as hate speech. Hate speech is regulated against. You also have the right to a certain level of privacy while on the internet. Platforms that promise to keep your information private must do exactly that. And with rights come responsibilities. You are given these rights, so appreciate them. Do not abuse them and make responsible decisions. And we're on to digital health. In fact, an improper use of technology may be detrimental to one's health. For example, research has shown that an increase in technology can lead to an increase in stress and anxiety. Parents and children should be made aware of this. Just the same, individuals that overuse technology can get headaches and migraines. Other effects include eye strain. You guessed it. That comes from staring at your cell phone for hours at night, especially in a dark room. Too much of anything is never a good thing. Students often experience a contact disconnect. Let's not forget the importance of human interaction and face-to-face -face experiences. And the long-term effects are relatively unknown. And now on to the last of the nine essential elements of digital citizenship, and that is digital security. Security is about taking proper steps to protect yourself from dangers. Now one of the first security measures you should take is to back up your data. God forbid something happens, you don't want to lose all your work. Next, be sure to lock your device when you are away from your computer, especially when using a public computer. Be wary and avoid all types of malware. These include Trojan horses, worms, viruses that can affect your computer. Become wise to online phishing. Phishing is an attempt or cybercrime where perpetrators try to lure someone into giving up their bank information or other important information. Anyway, right now I want to say thank you for your time. Again, please hit that like, share this video, and hit that subscribe button. Also, check the description links as I have many resources for teachers, students, and others interested in digital citizenship.